Hey guys, it's Dean. Welcome to Manflow Yoga. This is a yoga workout to boost your testosterone. So what's really cool about most of the poses in this video is that they're actually proven to boost testosterone. This isn't just me guessing. These have actually been proven to boost testosterone. So we're gonna go through um, a few of those postures. I've also inserted a few other poses uh, to help make this a little more challenging and add some muscle uh, building aspects as well. So do your best, follow along. You won't need any equipment for this routine and I'll walk you through every aspect of the pose. Here we go. We're gonna start this routine off on the ground in a forearm plank. So forearms parallel to one another, about shoulder width distant, palms flat on the floor. Walk your feet in toward your elbows, lift your belly button so your back is slightly rounded and then look slightly forward. Hug your arms toward one another, press down through your forearms and again lift your belly button so you feel your abs start to engage. Big focus of boosting testosterone is strengthening your core and your pelvic floor. So we're gonna be working a lot on your hips and your abs. Um, and as we're going through this workout, uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. I hope you'll hit the like button if you enjoy this workout and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. We're here for another two breaths, just getting your body warm, making sure those muscles are turned on. Part of boosting testosterone involves proper technique. If you just look at me and you try to mirror me without doing the proper technique, you're not going to get as good results. So make sure you're listening along. All right, go ahead and release down. From here, we're going into Cobra. This is one of the best poses for boosting testosterone. Extend your legs out as far as you can behind you. Hug your legs together. Make sure that the tops of your feet are facing the ground. So big toes touch, inner thighs squeeze toward one another. Tighten your abs and then use your hands to pull your chest forward and up and you're pulling yourself up, not pressing yourself up. Pull your chin in toward your throat, pull your neck back and then squeeze your elbows down toward your hips and in toward your sides. And we're holding this for 30 seconds. You're gonna feel your hips, your core, your thighs, and your back working. Make sure there's no pinching in your back. You wanna feel some nice muscle engagement, but you shouldn't feel any pinching or pain. If you do, lower yourself down a little bit. Try to keep your breathing slow and controlled in and out of your nose. Make sure you're not huffing and puffing. And if you are, go down a little bit. Last 10 seconds here. See if you can go a little bit higher, just make sure there's no pain, no discomfort. Two, one, and then release. All right, from here we're gonna move into a boat pose. This is really, really important for transverse abdominals, pelvic floor, and core strength. So you're gonna sit, bring your feet out in front of you, start with your legs bent, lift your chest up, pull your shoulder blades down and toward one another, so you're puffing your chest out. Lean back slightly, keep your hands on either side of your hips, and then lift your shins to parallel to the floor. Now as you do this, make sure that your back stays flat. Don't allow your chest to cave in. Keep your back flat, your chest lifted, and you're gonna feel those muscles at the tops of your legs, your hip flexors and your quadriceps work to help hold yourself up in this position. So really make sure those muscles are working. If you need a little break, you, you can relax your legs. You can also keep your hands along your sides, resting on the ground to help support yourself. Now to make this more challenging, lift your legs higher using your hip, your thigh, your core strength. Bring your arms out in front of you, so off the ground. So now you're only using your core and your hip strength to stay upright. And if you wanna make this even more challenging, you can extend your legs. Hold this for 30 seconds at least. Make sure that there's no pinching through your back. You're gonna prevent that by focusing on these abdominal muscles and your hips. Make sure your back stays flat. You wanna think about lifting your chest up toward the ceiling. Last 10 seconds. Still breathing with control. Four, three, two, one, and then release. All right, from here we're going into a seated twist. 
Bring your right leg straight out in front of you. Cross your left foot over your right ankle. And just like we did before, sit up really tall here. If you notice that your lower back is poking out behind you, I want you to sit slightly forward and then use your hands to help support yourself. Shouldn't feel any pain um, or overstretching in your low back. This should be focused on your hips and your core. Think about lifting your right leg off the floor. If you actually squeeze your kneecap and flex your quadricep, your heel will lift slightly off the floor. That way you know that leg is active. From here, you can hug your left knee in toward your chest using your hands and use that to sit up as tall as you can. So you're pushing down through your hips, squeezing your thighs. And then from here, twisting toward the left. You can keep that right hand on your left knee for a little bit of support. If you feel strong enough here and you don't need your hand to hold yourself upright, you can bring your right elbow outside your left knee. But you wanna make sure that you're using your core strength and your hip strength to stay upright here and you're not just relying on this arm to hold yourself in this position. If you wanna test that, you can lift your left hand away from the floor and then you can kinda of tell if you're still using your core strength there. This is called a seated twist. And this is really good for your core, your back and your hips. As you inhale, lengthen the top of your head toward the ceiling. And as you exhale, twist deeper. One more breath here. All right, come back to the middle. Little break. And we'll switch sides. Now the left leg is straight out. Again, squeeze your quadricep, lock out the knee, lift the heel a little bit, just make sure that leg is engaged. And then cross your right foot over your left knee. Use your hands to hug your right knee in toward your chest. And focus on holding yourself here with strength. Again, primarily using your hips and your core to hold yourself in this position and only lightly relying on your hands. Sit up as tall as you can, pull the shoulder blades down and back. And then if you're feeling good here, bring your right hand, plant it behind your lower back and bring your left hand to your outside of your right knee. Pull that in toward your chest a little bit. Feeling strong here. Bring your left elbow outside the right knee. Twist a little bit more. And using your breath to help get through this posture with a bit more strength and proper technique, you wanna use your inhale to get tall, pressing the top of your head upward, and then exhaling to twist deeper into the pose. As you inhale, you should feel your lower abdominal, your pelvic floor, and actually all the way up through your ribs expanding as you inhale. And as you exhale, squeezing your abs, twisting deeper into the pose. Keep the legs active. Remember, use your core strength to stay upright. One more breath here. And then twist back toward the middle. Okay, nicely done. From here, we're gonna work our way up to a standing position. But first, chair pose. So plant your feet, big toes touching, heels an inch apart, bring your butt down. Try to get it level with your knees. Use your hands to press yourself up, so chest upright, keeping your legs bent, staying in this kind of modified squat position. Make sure that your back is flat. Don't round your back, don't lean forward. So you wanna feel your lower body really working hard to support yourself here. Hug your knees toward one another to engage your inner thighs. That's gonna help with core strengthening. And then lift your arms up and squeeze them as far back as you can. We're just gonna be here for 10 seconds. This is a chair pose. This is really good for hip strength, pelvic strength, pelvic floor strength, and your core strength. Squeeze your arms back even more. Longest 10 seconds of your life. Five seconds more. Four, three, two, one, and then stand up into a standing back bend. Press down through your feet, squeeze your arms back, lift your chest up toward the ceiling. Keep your chin in toward your throat, chin tucked in toward the throat, neck pulling back, and stay really tall here through the back of your spine. 10 seconds in this standing back bend. Squeeze your arms back as far as you can. 
Lots of opening through the chest. Keep your thighs and your abs working. Support your back. Shouldn't feel any pain. Three, two, one. And then release your hands. Shake your arms out. Nicely done. From here, we're going to go into a horse or a goddess pose. This is really good for your hips, your pelvic floor. Again, I want you to turn your feet out about 45 degrees. If you're really flexible in your hips, or generally if you're female, um, then you might be able to turn your toes all the way out. Personally, I'd recommend you do 45 degrees. That's where I like to do it, and that way you're not going to put your knees at risk. So turn your toes out about 45 degrees, spread your feet pretty wide, and then sit down into this, or kind of squatting down into this. Squeeze your knees toward the back. That's going to engage your glutes. Your glutes are a big part of, of testosterone, building that strength there. Lift your chest up, lean slightly back. So you're gonna have a slight arch to your back. Bring your arms out in front of you to kind of help counterbalance. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, sit down deeper. As you inhale, I want you to feel your pelvic floor expanding. So you should be able to push out in all directions as you inhale. And then as you exhale, really squeeze out all the air and contracting your core. Three more breaths here. Your legs should be working really hard here. Make sure that you're staying upright through your chest. And as you exhale, continue to go deeper. One more breath. All right, and then slowly stand up. Whew. Nice job. From here, we're gonna go into standing bow. This is a balance and a back bend. We're gonna do pretty much everything in your body with this. Stand on your right foot. Bring your left heel in toward your butt. So squeeze your left heel in toward your butt. Grab the big toe side of your foot, making sure that you turn your arm to face out, biceps facing out, not grabbing with an internal rotation. Lift your right arm up, take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, press your left foot into your left hand, reach forward and up, keep your hips facing straight forward, and moving into standing bow slash dancer. Continue to press into your left hand with your left foot. That's going to allow you to hold this pose longer. You're gonna feel a lot of stretching here through your chest and also through your left hip flexors. Keep your chest up, keep your right leg active. Don't lock out the knee, keep it slightly bent and continue to squeeze your quadriceps. Three breaths here. As you hold this pose longer, you might notice you can go deeper into it. And if you happen to fall out of it, just slowly get back in and keep trying. One more breath here. All right, slowly release. Nicely done. Switch sides, same thing other side. Stand on your left foot with control. Squeeze your right heel in toward your butt. Reach back, grab the inside. Big toe side of your right foot, biceps facing out so that your chest is open here. Extend your left arm up, palm facing forward. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, press your right foot into your right hand. Reach forward and up with your left hand. Keep the hips squared forward. Don't allow your hips to turn out to the side. Maintain your breathing, slow and controlled. And if you need help with the balance, which probably all do, look at a non-moving point at eye level straight in front of you. Continue to push hard into your right hand with that foot. Keep your left leg active. You might feel wobbly through your ankle, that's normal. Two more breaths here. As you exhale, maybe going deeper into this, Maybe just staying where you are. That's fine too. Last breath. All right, and then coming out. Nicely done. From here, taking it down to the ground, moving into a full locust pose. This is a really intense pose. 
but really good for testosterone. Extend your arms out along your sides, palms facing up. Take a deep breath in, and then lift everything off the ground. Extend your legs backwards as far as you can. Try to touch the back wall with your toes. Lock out your legs, squeeze your arms up, open your chest, pull the shoulder blades together, tuck your chin in toward your throat, and try to press the top of your head away from your hips. So everything's lengthening and lifting. Your whole body is engaged here. Maintain that controlled breathing. Try not to huff and puff. If you are huffing and puffing, don't go as far into this pose. You got two more breaths here. Keep pushing yourself. It's just your body weight. You can do it. And then release. All right, from here we're gonna go into a downward facing dog and do some knee to noses. So plant your hands like you do them for a plank or a push up. Bend your knees slightly. Bring your butt up and back. Press down firmly into your hands. Chest pressing back toward your feet. And then squeezing your quadriceps to help straighten your legs. Just make sure you're keeping your back flat here. So if you feel like your back is rounding, I want you to bend your knees. Think about aiming your tailbone upward. And then from there, maybe straightening the legs a little bit. But don't lock out your knees, especially uh, if you're a beginner or you're not as flexible as a yogi quite yet. Side note, I am not as flexible as many yogis. So I bend my knees, my heels don't quite touch the ground. All right, now bring your toes together. Keep your heels about an inch apart. Lift your left leg up in the air, keeping your hips squared down or forward. And then as you exhale, squeeze your left knee to your left elbow. Pull your body forward and lift your knee as high as possible toward the armpit, heel squeezing in toward your butt. Next, inhale, come back up, extend your leg up once more. And then squeeze your knee to your elbow once more. We're gonna do five of these. Make it slow and controlled. Make sure your breathing matches the movement. Exhaling to bring the knee to elbow. Inhaling to bring it back up. Last one on this side. Back up and release your leg down. All right, two breaths in down dog. Stay active, don't just rest here. I want you to actually do down dog. Press down into your hands, squeeze your thighs, releasing your heels toward the ground. All right, time for the right side. Lift your right leg up, keep the hips squared forward. As you exhale, squeeze your right knee toward your right elbow, and then hug it up toward your armpit. Squeeze your right heel in toward your butt. Next, inhale, bring your leg back up. Exhale, knee to elbow. Squeeze it in, lean forward. Five of those. Make sure that your breath is matching the movement. Mindful of every part of this technique, not just rushing through it, but really focusing on using your muscles. Last one, knee to nose. Legs back up and then release it down. Couple breaths in down dog. Squeeze your thighs, try to flatten your back, press down hard through your hands, and then release back all the way down onto your chest. All right, couple more, keep pushing with me. Bring your arms out in front of you, thumbs facing up, we're gonna do a Superman. This is just like the full locust we did a couple poses ago, but with your arms in front of you. Take a deep breath in. And then lift everything, arms, legs, torso, and press your arms forward like you're trying to make your body longer. Extend your legs back. Press your pelvic, uh, press your pubic bone into the floor. So that's your waist area. Push that into the floor. 
If you need to adjust yourself, if you're crushing your balls, please adjust yourself. You're going to tuck down. You know what I mean when you do it. And then extend your arms forward, extend the legs back, reach up higher. We're here for two breaths, so that's about 15 to 20 seconds. Maintain that muscle engagement, keep pushing yourself. Even if you can't be as high as you want to be, keep pushing yourself. Five seconds. Three, two, one, and then release. All right, we've got one more pose for you here. This is crow pose. Now this is challenging. If you can't do it the first time, don't be mad at yourself. It's a hard exercise. You're gonna get into a squat position to start this. You can turn your toes slightly out. Work on getting your butt to the ground. If your heels come off the ground, that's okay. And then you're gonna plant your hands like you're doing a plank. From here, I want you to bring your knees up toward your armpits and get them as tight as you can into your armpits. That's hard to do if you haven't done it before. From here, you're gonna lean forward, hug your elbows toward one another, your biceps are going to face forward, and then one leg at a time, bring your heels, heels off the ground, look slightly forward, hug your heels in toward your butt, hug the elbows in toward one another, and now you're doing crow pose. All right, try that one more time. Again, walking you through it, planting your hands, hugging your knees up toward your armpits. If you can't do it yet, it's okay. It takes a while to get there. You want to make sure that you are really using your abdominal area here and try and keep the front of your abs long. Make sure you're not crunching in and you're keeping your legs active too. It's not just about your arms, it's actually mainly about the core in your legs. Elbows hug in toward one another, so your shoulders, your elbows, and your hands line up. Think about pulling your belly button toward your low back. Make sure that your neck is free, so you're pulling your neck slightly forward, creating that length from shoulders to head. All right, and that's it. If you liked it, be sure to hit that like button. If you found it challenging, I want you to hit the like button anyways. Challenges are good. If you, are, if you find something that challenges you, it's going to help you get stronger. And that's what's going to lead to improvements in your overall health, i.e. your testosterone. Um, leave a comment if you have any questions or feedback. Subscribe if you haven't already to this YouTube channel. We put out great new content every week. And uh, if you're looking for other tips on boosting your testosterone, um, I do have a great blog on my website uh, for this, manfreyoga.com slash blog. Check it out. You wanna make sure that you're eating well, you want to make sure that you're sleeping well. That's actually the biggest factor. Um, managing your stress uh, and exercising regularly. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, like, comment, subscribe. Um, turn on notifications so you don't miss out on future videos. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye.